Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk About It. On today's show, we're gonna talk about divorce and how it's viewed by the church. And also our guest for today is Karen Hawley. ago I downloaded a weight loss app. At first I hated that thing. I really hated it. It held me accountable for all my decisions, the good and the bad. But as I was tracking my weight on this app, it would show me clapping hands for entries that were going in the right direction. Yay me! That's how it made me feel. Then one day I had to document a number that just was not in the right direction. And I was so upset over it. I almost had myself talked into just not typing it in at all. But I did, instead of showing a hand with a thumbs down like I was expecting, it said on the screen, it's okay, don't give up, stay on track. And those positive and encouraging words gave me the strength to keep trying yet another day. I've often thought about how that app responded to my failure and how God responds to my failures. How many times have I failed? How many times have I not had a good entry in his book? Yet every time I come to him with my negative reports and ask for forgiveness, he always responds with, It's okay, Teresa, you got this. Get back on track. And just like Jesus' response to the woman caught in adultery, he forgave, he encouraged her to go on and sin no more, and he did not respond with condemnation, but with the grace and hope to do better. No wonder those messages on that weight loss app were so comforting and familiar in my times of failure and in success. God is faithful to direct those same comments to me every single day. And just like that app knew I was going to have a lackluster day, so did he. And they are both quick to lift me up and set me on the right path as I strive to do the right thing once again. I am grateful for new mercies every day. How about you? And when we come back, we will tackle another tough question about divorce and how it's viewed in the church. So hey, let's talk about it. When it's time for a new roof, Champion Roofing is your best choice. We're a certified award-winning roofing contractor, meaning your roof is done right the first time. Call today. Champion Roofing, we're the solution. This segment is brought to you by Harry's Construction, whose motto is, if you can dream it, we can create it. They are the kitchen and bath design experts, so call Harry's Construction for all your remodeling needs. Welcome back. We are here today to discuss with my friends the topic of divorce and hopefully how it's viewed in our hearts in, I don't know, the church, I guess. Yeah, for sure. So I guess here I am bearing my soul on TV. Again. (laughs) Again, because on my paper, I have number three divorce and I've written nothing Hmm. because Hmm. probably nobody knows this, but I am divorced. Hmm. I've been married 32 years, but there was a life before that. Mm -hmm. So, but I'll let you guys tell me your, your stance on things. Well, let me give just a couple numbers before we get Mm -hmm. into this, because I found some really interesting facts. First of all, 40 to 50% of marriages end in divorce, whether it's in the church, Mm Mm-hmm. or not mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it jumps to 60 to 70 percent if it's your second marriage so i thought that was interesting yeah yeah it's way higher now this one really caught my attention most divorces are initiated by women in fact 70 percent that's interesting. and that i found interesting and couldn't really wrap my head around the why to that i didn't know but that. yes 70 percent hmm. are initiated hmm. by women hmm. but they're one good thing I did read is there's a decline in divorce. Uh, well, but do you know why? Well, the f- one reason that I read is because people are waiting longer. People to aren't get- getting married. They're living together. And it- therefore, when they, when they split up, there's... Oh, I never even thought about that. There's that, that, that but yeah. also people are waiting longer to, to get, get married. married yes. And so there's a more stable yes. foundation there, mm-hmm. I think. 
Is Theoretically. The, yeah, that's... Yeah. So those were just some of the things that I saw. Mm -hmm. But the one about the women, and I'm yeah, like... Yeah, that really surprises me. I initiated. Did, did you? I okay. Did. Do you mind saying... I don't mind. I, um, I don't want to get into saying bad things about people that... Right. My hope and prayer is that this person is doing well today mm -hmm. and is not the same person mm -hmm. because I'm mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I will say that I was in danger. Okay. Had been in danger. Okay. And I honestly feel that at the end of the day, he had some issues and that I... That you didn't know about. Well, no, I knew. Oh, you did? I okay. Knew. Yeah, okay. I knew. I thought I could fix them. Oh, okay. Mm. I thought I was young. Yeah. I thought if I get married, I, I will be there all the time. I can see what's going on. I mm -hmm. can fix this. But mm -hmm. I started working in the medical field around professionals, mm -hmm. and I managed our checkbook, and I managed a home, and I just grew up. Mm. And he didn't. Mm. But that's not why I left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I left because I was in danger. Mm -hmm. mm. And um, it was no. hard because I was thinking, who's ever going to want me? Yeah. Everything that I thought I yep. wanted in my life began and ended with him. Mm -hmm. Where do I go from here? Did you doubt yourself completely? Um, yeah. Okay. I, I didn't have very good self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Yep. I was beat down. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't, I mean, I know a lot. A lot of my friends are divorced. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of mine are too. And here's the thing, in the church that I would say, obviously we do not want divorce. Absolutely not. That is not. not the goal. And we know biblically that's not what God right. has for right. us. Right. But there are certain circumstances in my mind, you know, he gives the, some reasons why. Um, adultery mm -hmm. is one that he, you know, mm -hmm. The Bible speaks about that it's okay mm -hmm. to get a divorce if there's abuse. So there are some biblical reasons to go ahead. But even um, the whole goal, though, is that if you don't have those situations that you're fighting against, that we stay together mm -hmm. and that we work together mm -hmm. and we communicate. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where my issue kind of falls is we so easily just said, well, I don't want to be with this person anymore. Yeah. I I'm fell not in out love, of love with them. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's yeah. where, you yeah. know, I'm going to have to take a stand to say, yeah. yep. Biblically, we're, not a, we're a throwaway society. Right. Marriage right. is not a throwaway thing. Right. It's a commitment. It's a yes. vow that you took. Yes. Mm. And we so, wow, that has changed so much. I think mm -hmm. in people's minds of that vow that you took. But they say it's okay. I, I also feel like people are more open about it now. Mm -hmm. I I know a lot of people who are in their 80s that were married when they were young and divorced and then remarried and been married, you know, 30, 40, 50 years. It's just we don't, we didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. You know, we, they didn't talk about it like we talk about things now. And I didn't know you were divorced, Teresa. But, but I also don't think that means you can't be a leader in a church. Oh, no. Here's the thing. This was off the heels of doing things as a teenager mm -hmm. that I shouldn't have done. Mm -hmm. um, right. And being with him and... Yes, my sin led to me being in this marriage that ended up being a disaster mm -hmm. but God redeemed me from mm -hmm. that I right. married there's John I, there's yes. grace. I started going back to church again I rededicated my life I've been in ministry for all yeah. of my adult life and I have three beautiful children mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that that was a celebratory time in my life right it mm -hmm. definitely was not um, definitely was not but someone asked me quite recently as I was trying to say this very thing, because believe me, I read those scriptures. I know what the Bible says about divorce. It does not make me feel very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but somebody said to me, okay, well, fine, but what would Jesus do? And I said, hopefully, kneel down, write something in the sand, send all oh, my kids away. Oh, and I totally believe. And tell me so to go and sin no more. Absolutely. But it wasn't an easy thing for me. It wasn't. But... Mm -hmm. I kind of, in a way, brought it on myself, too, because I, I lived a life at that time that I mm -hmm. was and with someone I And that's what I think is different. 
if you're not living a Christian life, if you don't have God in your heart and you're not in the word, why am I expecting that you're going to make Christian mm -hmm. choices yeah, and we decisions can't for your life? That for, I no. don't expect those no. people to be making the right choices. And if they now live a life for God, why would I ever hold them back from what God wants to do in and through them because of mm -hmm. something that happened in their past that they weren't even living for Christ? So I think that's different. Mm -hmm. I think there's redemption, mm -hmm. there's grace, and there's healing, and what God can do in and through that story, I'm totally on board with. And I would never keep someone out of ministry or being used by God because they had a divorce in yeah. their life. I hate yeah, when I hear let that. let me tell you something. If you're without sin, pick up that stone and right. throw it first. Well, that's right. the thing. Because I definitely wouldn't be used in ministry either. then, me either. you know? No, me and, either. I mean, I've been married for 32 years, mm -hmm. and for 32 years I've woken up every single day, without a doubt, knowing that I am loved, yeah, without right. a doubt. Yeah. And so yeah. my only thing that I would just come back to is, you know, if you are saved, if you you say you're living for God, you're in the Word, mm -hmm. and then you say, well, I just don't want to be in this marriage anymore. That's where my issue yes, kind of. Yes, mine too. And mm -hmm. we can give you names of people that can help you. Yes. Right. Don't come to the point where it's like, I'm done. That's right. <laughs> like, ask for help before you get yes. to that mm -hmm. point. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I've, I mean, there's people that spend years being married that are living like they're divorced. That's right. And that's... A terrible place to be as well. That's exactly Absolutely. right. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yep. So there you have it. Um, our opinions on divorce, <laughs> and let me be your example or not so good example. <laughs> that life does go on, and you can overcome it. And when we come back, we will have our guest for the day. Mouthwatering family recipes, easy to make meals, humor, and faith fill the inspiring show Dano on the Counter. Born with only half a spine, Dano Burkhardt was never supposed to be able to hold his head up. Despite countless surgeries, a stroke, leg amputations, and kidney transplants, Dano developed a contagious love for life. Join Dano on Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. on Fox 8 as he shares his easy to make dishes and the hope that keeps him pushing forward. Impact Productions, a multi-layer technology company providing on-site, online, and in-studio video services. Contact Impact Productions to capture your story. Welcome back to Let's Talk About It. Today we have my good friend Karen Hollinger with us today to talk about um, a subject that we've already discussed, but we're going to learn a little bit about her journey. So Karen, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, I don't know how much in depth to get into, but <laughs> I'll start with the fact that um, I was raised in a small town, a very small town, um, and I was the youngest of five. Um, I went, uh, after high school, I graduated um, and went to um, a two-year business school and got my associate's degree. And um, after that, I, I come home, got a job in that field. Um, I worked in the, it was in the medical field, and I worked in that field for um, almost 45 years, maybe even a little Good bit more. Good for you. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Great time. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So April the 8th of 2022, I was able to retire. So um, I married um, my husband, Chris, and we have two dogs. So that's just a little yeah. basic thing about me. So, so tell us where and when you met your first husband and what happened with that? Sure. Um, so, like I said, I went away to school. Um, when I was in school, I wasn't a girl that dated a lot. I was more into sports and all this kind of stuff. So I met my first husband um, and um, we eventually got married. And uh, I met him just in town. He was he was a local uh, uh, And person. you were pretty young, right? I was 21 when we got married, yeah. So, you know, at that time I thought I was in love. And, and, and at that time, you know, I'm sure I was. Mm -hmm. But um, so um, we got married and um, 
uh, built a house, and I thought everything was great. You know, I, th I was doing what I was supposed to be doing, I thought, and um, was very happy with it, and I had made that commitment. This is, you know, I, there, was no, there was no doubt in my mind that I would have stayed in that relationship um, till death do us part, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, but then it, something changed. Yeah, yes. something changed. Um, we were married about 12 years, and um, like I said, I thought I was. I thought we were happy, and then I noticed a change in him, and um, you know, and it was just one of those things like he wasn't happy. There were mm. some things within his family. His family had a had a business and stuff, and his dad had gotten sick, and I have no um, hard feelings towards him towards his family because of all of this, um, uh, because I have no control over what they did, what he did, but it was one of those things, his decision affected me. Oh, I mm. had no control over it. Um, it mm. wasn't my choice, mm. it were was you, his. Were you in church at the time? So that's, that's, a, that's a good question, Teresa. But mm. um, I went to church, but I have to tell you, um, and I've, I've talked to Kelly different times about this, um, as a child, we lived only like a, a block away from the church. And so my parents weren't Christians at the time, but they sent us kids to church mm -hmm. every Sunday. And when I was in fifth grade, I got saved. And so every time the church doors were open, I was there and I loved it. Anything that I could do, I was always there. But it was a very small church. I'm talking like maybe 40 people, but we had some awesome women in that church who um, poured into our lives. Mm. Our Sunday school teachers, my pastor was a female and mm. she was like Holy Ghost filled, mm. uh, on so fire. So you and all of your siblings came yes. to church? Yes, okay. yeah. Okay. What I can remember, uh -huh. like I remember mm. my closest sisters, mm -hmm. you know, and my brother. But the teachers there taught us like, you know, they treated us like their own. Mm. And they, they instilled a lot of good things into mm -hmm. us. So I did get saved at around fifth grade and um, went to church, like I said, all the time. And then, of course, when I met my first husband, um, you know, I, I started like thinking, well, I don't have to go when we were dating. Yeah, I'll miss this Sunday mm -hmm. because he wasn't in the same place that I was. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's what I would do. I would think, well, I'll go and uh, OK, I can miss this week. I can miss this week. And mm -hmm. before I knew it, I wasn't as active in the church as I should mm. have been. Mm -hmm. And, um, um, you know, but hindsight, mm -hmm. you know, now I so, look at it. So he wants this divorce. You don't see it coming. No. And you don't want this. No. Mm -hmm. And obviously we know you, we know where it went. Um, what did that do for you? What did that do mm. to your self-esteem and how did you get back up out of that? Well, um, I was crushed. Mm. Um, I was totally lost, didn't know what to do. Like I said, I had, uh, um, we had built a home and mm. um, so where we had built it and everything and um, I, had, I had been working at a hospital for 12 years and because of his family and his dad and stuff being sick, I had um, stopped working and thought that I was done working because I was going to help the family business. Oh, you were, okay. Yeah, okay. and so mm -hmm. in, in that period of time, then that's when everything fell apart. Hmm. And um, uh, didn't know why, you know, to this day, I don't know why. I can speculate why, mm -hmm. but I don't know why. Um, so even looking back, you, looking back, you don't see, you didn't see signs, things, there weren't things that happened that if you'd have been, noticing them well there there were some signs um and i i would question him okay. on certain okay. things and um like i said i i i, I don't um i don't have any hard feelings towards him at all uh, you know god's took that all away mm. but um yeah i did see signs okay and i kept thinking you know what's wrong you know and this kind of stuff mm. um and um I was the one that actually left and thinking, okay, I'll give him some time, uh, you know, thinking like, you know, of course he's going to come to his senses mm -hmm. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, and everything will work out. So I never th expected to end the way that it did. Mm. Um, I think even after the divorce, I still thought that he would come around mm. and that that would be um, 
you know, everything would be okay. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't how it ended. Um, and like mm -hmm. I said, I was crushed. My world was just tore apart. Mm -hmm. Turned upside down. Yeah. Turned upside down. Mm -hmm. Everything I, that you saw for your future. Everything, crumbled. yes, mm -hmm. yeah. But I mean, and... and did um, it affect you physically also? Uh, like I lost a little weight mm -hmm. from it, yeah. But, mm -hmm. oh no, I was, I was, um, like I said, I was crushed. Um, I, I, I pretty much went through the day, um, but um, when I would, you know, because I, I had to get a job. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I moved out of the house, so everything was new to me. Oh. I'd given up every little thing that I had. Mm -hmm. You know, my family was over there. Um, I actually moved over to this way, but mm -hmm. uh, like I said, there was good mm -hmm. that came out of mm -hmm. it. So. Yeah, and I know. I know some of that story. So what are some things that helped you move forward mm -hmm. and move out of that? Okay. Um, so, you know, when I, when I was going through that, um, I, I moved over to this area. And um, God was so good. I mean, if nothing else, it brought me closer and back to Him mm -hmm. where I needed to be. And, um, you know, of course, I, I got into reading the Word a lot more. And... Um, I, 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 the job that I got, I, the lady that, that hired me, she was a Christian and, you know, she, you know, said why she had hired me, you know, and it was pretty much God. Aww. And, um, so, uh, but the per, and then the person that worked with me at the hospital here, um, obviously got me, um, invited me to church. Mm. Um, cause like I said, I went to work, I come home, I crashed, and mm -hmm. you know, this and that. So she invited me to this church at Pleasant Valley, it was, uh, for the Christmas musical. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, I really like this. Uh -huh. And even though I still hurt, it didn't take away the hurt or mm -hmm. anything, but um, uh, I thought, oh, this is pretty cool. Maybe I'll go to this church. And um, I came back on New Year's. I brought some friends, and I'm like, let's go back here for New Year's. And um, 33 years later, I'm still going Aww. here. And like I said, God put people in my life through all of this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, n no matter what I was going through, something was always there. And um, mm -hmm. like I said, it's 33 years later, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it all Good. worked out. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I yes. mean, I met my husband at this church. Mm -hmm. And you know we just celebrated 30 years of marriage. Perfect. So Perfect. God can take a bad thing mm -hmm. and yes. make it good. Absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. We appreciate you coming on today and talking about a story that was a tough time in your sure. life, mm -hmm. but you did it. Yeah, right. you did, I did it. it. Yes. So we leave you with that just to say that you can be redeemed. We don't necessarily celebrate divorce in the church, but it's not always um, something that's someone's fault. Mm -hmm. right. And um, mm -hmm. you can be redeemed and you can pick up the pieces and leave a very, very fulfilling life. When we come back, we'll have your tip for the day. For generations, Dick's Home Care has been providing the best equipment and service for patient care at home. Breathe easier with oxygen from Dick's Home Care. Oxygen concentrators give you a continuous oxygen supply at home. Oxygen cylinders supply oxygen without power. And portable oxygen frees you to go. Dick's Home Care technicians will set your oxygen up and make sure you know how to use it. Call the leader in home medical equipment, Dick's Home Care. Made by Vogel is a father and son business that produces high quality handmade wooden products such as cutting boards, bowls, bottle stoppers and more. Products for sale can be found on their Etsy site or in downtown Altoona at the Clay Cup. You can't go wrong buying from Made by Vogel. Next week on Let's Talk About It. Well, and it's probably, even now, it's probably easier to take from kids sure. than it is <laughs> from yeah. the bigger. Yeah, people. right, right. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and of course, and I understand that I've dealt with it, you know, almost yes. my whole life. 
So I have no problem with that, either either side, either the young ones or the older ones. I'd rather them ask me. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and of course, and I understand that I've dealt with it, you know, almost yes. my whole life. So I have no problem with that, either either side, either the young ones or the older ones. I'd rather them ask me, mm. come up to me and talk to me and, yeah. and say, you know, just say, hey, you know, do you mind explaining to me? Are you, you know, like I get, are you a veteran? I get that mm -hmm. a lot, of course, you know, because I'm at that age. Um, or, you know, they're just curious what, what happened. Uh, why can't you uh, walk or why How do you, you not have a chip on your shoulder? I know. <laughs> How do you not? There's such joy that radiates from you. You make me laugh. Yeah. Like, yeah. you're I, so fun. I love when I see Dano come into church and I'm like, yeah, today is a good day. Like, is he, he's like an overcomer like no other. Yeah. yeah. So how do you not have a chip on your shoulder? Well, I tell you, it's just the way that my, my parents didn't put any uh, limitations on me. That's mm. from the, the get go, you know, mm. that I was, uh, I found out a lot of things on my own that my parents let me discover things on my own um, and then, uh, yeah, okay. and, then, and then I found out that if I couldn't do something, then I made that decision. It wasn't something that my parents said, you can't do that. Oh. It was, you know, hey, you try that, you figure it out, you find your way to get on the counter to brush your teeth, you know what oh. I mean? You find your way in and out of the bathtub, you oh. know, you find your way out of your bed, into your chair, that, that kind of thing. Of course, they were there to help me if I needed it, but they really let me do things on my own. Mm. And, and that gave me a whole new, um, vote of confidence that mm -hmm. you know I can do things you know and but you I can do it yeah and then mm -hmm. even today um, I still even have some friends that you know they like to push me you know my handles on my chair like be sure to come back next week for let's talk about it welcome back my tip for today is a crazy thing it's these things called waffle towels there's no terry cloth involved in these things um, they literally are made like a like a waffle like a belgian waffle and they are extremely absorbent yet they're not thick and they dry like mega quick mega quick um, i'm able to sometimes throw these because there's only two of us so we don't always have a big load of towels i can literally throw these in the wash with say my light colored clothes and it doesn't leave any any lint or anything and when you put them in the dryer they like or dry lickety split because there's just not a whole lot to it yet it is so extremely absorbent um, my daughter and my daughter-in-law brought these things to my attention about a year ago and so I have been able to find these at Target and they're not cheap but I go in and if I catch them on sale I'll buy one or two and then I go home and throw a couple other towels out and replace them with these um, another thing I want to tell you about these is because they dry so quick and they don't, they're not so bulky and thick and absorb all that moisture that stays in them, um, they don't get a whole lot of bacteria or anything growing in them because they just dry that fast. And my daughter told me that they're supposed to be easy on your hair, ladies. When you towel dry your hair, it's not as rough. It's not as rough on your hair. So I recommend that you buy these things. I'm telling you, it was a game changer. And as you can see, they're just not very thick at all, but they're great towels. And these ones that I have are about a year old and they're still in pretty good shape. So that's my tip for today. And we hope to see you again next week on Let's Talk About It.